everyone. Welcome back to Granny's Place. I'm so glad you can come and listen to stories again today. I just love to read these stories to you. Um, and I found another book today. This one's a little bit different. This is a fun book. It's called Bible Stories That End With a Hug. So even though we can't be together, we can't be close to each other, uh, give yourself a big hug or find somebody to in your house that you can give a hug to after we read these stories, okay? This one is about Jesus. We have a couple stories about Jesus today because we're singing about Jesus. We're um, listening to the Christmas story about Jesus coming into the world. And um, it's just a, it's a wonderful season. So I thought we would have a few stories about Jesus today. This one is called The Messiah in a Manger. When Jesus was born, he didn't have a nice crib to sleep in. So his mother Mary put Jesus in a wooden box called a manger. Can you say manger? An angel came to some shepherds when Jesus was born to tell them about Jesus. The angel said, you will find Messiah sleeping in a manger. It was a sign that Jesus was sent from God. Here's the shepherds and here's Jesus with his mom and his dad and he's in the manger. What does Messiah mean? Messiah means two things, anointed and appointed. Anointed means to be covered. Appointed means to be given a job. Jesus uh, is our Messiah. He was anointed and appointed by God to save us from our sins. Is Jesus the Messiah? Yes, he is the Messiah in a manger. Jesus was anointed and appointed to save God's people. The name Jesus means God saves. Jesus was covered by God's love and given the job of salvation. Only Jesus could do that. Now, here comes the hug part. Give the one who knows what Messiah means a great big hug. When Jesus was a boy, what was he like? Did he like to sing or draw or read? Did he play with friends or chase butterflies? We don't know for sure, but we do know Jesus loved to go to church. It was called the temple. Can you say temple? He went to talk about God in the temple. God is his heavenly father. When Jesus was 12 years old, his family took him to the temple. For three days, Jesus was listening to the teachers there and he asked questions. He was growing by knowing. And this pleased God. How can I start growing by knowing? I can be like Jesus and you can be like Jesus. Jesus loved to go to church. It's a great place to listen to teachers and ask questions about the Bible. So be like Jesus. Start growing by knowing and learning more about God. And here's the hug time. It says, give the one who is growing and knowing God a great big hug. So we can give ourselves a hug or we can give somebody in our house a hug. Let's read another story about Jesus. John the Baptist 
stood in the Jordan River. There he baptized people who wanted God to forgive their sins. Baptism is a way of saying, I'm sorry for my sins. One day Jesus came to be baptized. John said, you should baptize me, Jesus. Why didn't John want to, want to baptize Jesus? John knew that Jesus was perfect. But Jesus said that he must be baptized because one day he would take your sin and my sin and everyone's sin upon himself. So John baptized Jesus that day. Baptism is a sign on the outside of a change in the inside. If you believe Jesus has taken away your sins, do that by faith because God has asked you to do it. Be like Jesus. And now it's another hug time. Give the one who will obey God and be baptized a great big hug. Okay, it's time for another hug. Oh boy, I wish you were right here so I could hug you in person. But we'll do that sometime, okay? One more story about Jesus. Jesus sat on a mountainside to teach his followers. He taught that the kingdom of God belongs to those who live and honor him. He taught people to love each other, forgive those who do wrong, and give to those in need. He even taught them how to pray. It was the greatest sermon ever. The last words of the sermon say, Anyone who hears and obeys my words is wise. Can you say wise? But those who hear and do not obey are foolish. Can you say foolish? Let's be wise and practice what Jesus preached. And here we are. Hug time. It says, give the ones who will practice what Jesus preached a great big hug. One more big hug for your day. Thanks for listening to these stories about Jesus. It's a great book. All right, let's check out. Beach Day Blast. Olaf is glad. At last it's a beach day. Let's move fast, 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 says Olaf. The friends get to the beach fast. Olaf makes a dash to the sand. He has a blast. Olaf dances in the sand. He has a blast. I am so glad it is beach day, said Olaf. Elsa and Anna play. They stack the sand. They pat the sand. And they have a blast. Olaf plays and he stacks the sand. He pats the sand and he has a blast. Oh, there they are together, having a blast. Olaf makes a dash. The waves go crash. Olaf runs so fast. 
he has a blast. Anna, Elsa, and Olaf play in the sand together. Look at that. They have a blast. Olaf makes a dash for his mat on the sand. Olaf, said Anna, you had a blast. I had a beach day blast, said Olaf. The end. Oh, that's a fun story about their beach day. Ooh, let's go back to some old stories. This is a story I used to read to my kids. It's called Uncle Wiggily to the Rescue. Uncle Wiggily is a huge rabbit. Uncle Wiggily and the Hop Toad. Once upon a time when Uncle Wiggily was looking for an adventure and at the same time going to the five and cent store to get a box of pins for Nurse Jane Fuzzy Wuzzy, the lady muskrat housekeeper. He heard voices behind a lollipop bush. A lollipop bush, you know, is the bush where lollipops grow. Hmm, I wonder who is talking there, said Uncle Wiggily. So, the bunny rabbit gentleman listened again and he heard one voice say, Oh, but mother, I'm afraid. Afraid of what, silly chap? said a second voice. You see me do it so easily. Why won't you try? I'll take a look, thought Uncle Wiggily. So he looked, and he saw a mother hop toad and her little boy. The mother toad was jumping around, but the little boy was squatting in a heap and keeping very, very still. Good morning, Mrs. Hopper Toad, said Uncle Wiggily. What seems to be the trouble? I can't get little Hoppy to hop, said Mrs. Toad. He's afraid even to take a tiny jump. So he sees me take big ones without getting hurt. Uncle Wiggily looked at the little toad. Why don't you hop as your mother does? He said gently. Because I'm afraid if I do, I'll come down so hard on the solid ground, I'll, I'll scrape my skin or I'll bend my toenails, said Hoppy. Well, you could get him a sofa cushion to land on for the first few hops, the bunny uncle told Mrs. Toad. I've done that, said Mrs. Toad, and I've made him a cushion out of some of Jimmy Wibblewobble's duck feathers. I've even bought him a football blown up with soft air to land on. But still he's afraid. He just crawls along and goodness knows, a hop toad boy will never amount to anything in this world unless he learns to jump. That's very true, said Uncle Wiggily. Suppose you leave Hoppy to me. I'll take him off to the woods. I don't mind if you walk slowly, for I'm in no hurry. And perhaps I can teach him to hop. Oh, I wish you would, said Mrs. Toad. And Hoppy, being very fond of Uncle Wiggily, he was glad to stay with the rabbit gentleman. So Uncle Wiggily took Hoppy into the woods. See Hoppy, said the bunny gentleman. Here is a soft bed of green moss as fluffy as a kitten's back. First, I'll jump on it and then you try. Uncle Wiggily gave one of his best jumps and he landed on the soft moss. Now it's your turn, called Uncle Wiggily. But I'm afraid I'll come down so hard I'll bite my tongue right off, said the little hop toad. 
Nonsense, laughed Uncle Wiggily. The bunny found some moss that it was even greener and thicker and fluffy as a poodle's dog's back. But still, Hoppy was afraid to jump. Well, let's see if I can find something else, said the bunny uncle politely. For you must learn to jump, my boy. Uncle Wiggily looked around the woods for something very soft and mushy. Ha! I see some toadstools, said Uncle Wiggily. They're as soft as peppermint patties. Uncle Wiggily had left the little hop toad squatting by the thick bed of moss. Now, the bunny was just going back to call Hoppy when all of a sudden, Hoppy, he gave a loud cry and he came leaping through the woods as fast as even his mother would have wished. Oh, look at him. Hoppy. You're jumping, exclaimed the bunny uncle. How did you do that? Don't stop to ask questions if you please, Uncle Wiggily, cried Hoppy. You better jump too. The wolf is coming. Come on, hop, hop, hop. Off they went. Hoppy had seen the bad wolf coming. Can you see him? And the little toad wanted to get away so much he hopped before he knew it. After that, Hoppy had no trouble for he found that he was especially made for jumping and it didn't hurt him at all. And if the apple doesn't fall off the peach tree and bump the ice water pitcher on the end of its nose, I'll tell you next about Uncle Wiggily and the butterfly. Okay, everyone, we're gonna save the butterfly story for next time. I'm going to uh, hope that you have a wonderful day or night and uh, thanks for coming to Granny's Place. We'll do more stories soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.